Hi there and welcome. In this video I'm going to take you through the creation process of this lovely fox on the right which is part of my new double red fox artwork that I recently finished. I will be working with soft pastel sticks and pastel pencils showing you my methods and techniques for drawing realistic animal fur. If you find yourself struggling to draw realistic fur, be sure to stick around for the whole video as I give many useful tips throughout as well as a thorough explanation on my favourite methods and techniques. If you're new here, welcome to the channel. My name is Seamus and I specialise in highly detailed realistic art. If that's something you're interested in or you would just like to improve some of your drawing or painting skills, feel free to subscribe for more and check out some of my other videos here on YouTube after this one. Okay, so as mentioned, this video will focus on the right fox, which as you can see is yet to be drawn. I first completed the fox on the left so that you can have an idea of what to expect and also so that I don't bore you by repeating myself all over again. The footage for this video is actually from my new near 6 hour tutorial over on Patreon. If you're looking for much more in-depth high quality tutorials, you can always find the link to my Patreon in the description. As with all of my portraits, whether they are humans or animals, I tend to start with the darkest parts of the important features, such as the eyes, nose and the mouth. This helps to start off the process and to map out crucial details straight away. I use the Creta Colour Black Chalk Pencil for the very darkest areas as it is the deepest black available. And once those dark areas are in place, I can use them as pinpoints to start adding in my base layer of colour. I'm using soft pastel sticks mainly from Unison Colour and Schmieke. As you can see there are a lot of browns, yellows and orange tones. I use a colour picker app on my iPad to help me decipher the correct colours as I go along. With soft pastels, it's really important that you keep your layers light. To put it in too much pastel pigment will cause your paper to clog up with too much pastel, not allowing for any details to then go on top. If you use Pastel Matte by Clairefontaine like I do, this paper does an excellent job at allowing you to work in many layers, but you should always still be mindful to keep your layers light. A little goes a long way with soft pastel sticks. Here I'm using a mixture of warm and cold greys to build up the base layer for the white fur. I need to make sure that this base layer is accurate and dark enough throughout so that when I come to draw in the highlight details with my pencils, they'll be able to stand out as the layer colour they are on will be dark in contrast. This is how we achieve the illusion of depth. Once I have placed all of the pastel colour for the base layer, I can then take my soft sponge tool and start to blend it out. I start in a particular area, usually a dark area, and then continue to blend in similar dark areas. This is because the dark pigment is on the sponge and will transfer over to whatever it touches. If I were to blend from a dark to a light area, I will only transfer that dark pigment over and vice versa. I need to work my way up to the lighter colours gradually. This blending out part also gives me the opportunity to refine by pushing the pastel to the exact places that they're meant to be and also to blend in two or more sections together seamlessly. I typically want smooth transitions between colours for my base layers and no harsh lines. Here you can see me adding even more colour after blending and this is just to keep the saturation and vibrancy nice and high which can be lost during the blending process. I will typically blend this with my finger as they give more of a blur effect compared to the sponges and therefore more colour tends to stay. Okay so I'm nearly done with the blending out of the base layer, ready for the exciting pencil details to go on top. As mentioned I wish for everything to be accurate and dark enough so that the highlight pencil details are able to achieve the illusion of depth. If the base layer isn't dark enough, a realistic sense of depth will not be achieved. It may look unimpressive right now, but all of the magic happens when we start to add in the pencil details. Before I carry on with this video, I just want to quickly mention my Patreon channel. On Patreon, you will find many of my high quality art tutorials and real time videos that go in depth on how I achieve lots of detail and realism in my artworks. I know how frustrating learning to draw and paint can be which is why I created my Patreon channel. All of the lessons are beginner friendly with the aim for you to learn as fast as possible to create realistic art that you're proud of. My Patreon channel is where I take you through my full creative process as well as explaining all of the techniques, thoughts and any tips that I may have. 
Each tutorial contains a full list of the specific materials and tools needed, so you're not left guessing what you need to get started. There are three subscription tiers to choose from that will instantly unlock access to hundreds of hours of high quality drawing and painting videos right now. If that's something you think you may be interested in, you can always find the link to my Patreon in the description, but for now, let's get back to the video. It doesn't matter where you first start adding in the details, just choose an area which is comfortable for you. I generally like to work from left to right, so here I'll start with the nose and mouth area, first working on the white fur. I'm adding in dark and light cold greys to give some definition to the fur, darkening even more towards the mouth line and giving a contour to the edges. This will start to give a 3D effect, I'm simply following the values that I can see in the reference photo. I've also used the dark grey to fill in those whisker dots on the snout, being very careful about the gaps in between and the general direction they form in. This will give shape and form to the snout. Here I'm now using the vibrant Caran d'Ache Chinese white to start to bring out some of the very bright highlighted white fur. I'll use this pencil to join the white fur with the brown area by using a light pressure and filling in the sharp lines like so. Again, following the particular direction and lengths of these hairs carefully. Once some of those highlights are down, I can then take a black to do the opposite which will increase the contrast. These black lines represent the dark shadowy gaps in between the highlighted hairs. It's important to keep paying attention to the direction of these lines and slowly build those details up. You may question why I didn't just make the base layer this dark and continue to only add highlight marks. I could do this, but creating a near black base layer will make it hard for any highlights to go on top and as pastels mix together, the colors may look muddy. I would rather opt for a dark brown like so and then add in black gaps if I feel the in-between gaps need to be even darker. So now I'm going to move on to the top of the snout and as you can see from the reference photo, there is quite a lot of highlight details here. Using vibrant pencils such as the Caran d'Ache and the Carbothellos will allow for opaque lines. Here you can see that with a sharp pencil, how I build up the area with many detailed lines. I don't need a hard pressure for this, rather a light pressure to gradually build the area up. I'm choosing light colours such as peaches and light yellows to keep the area vibrant and realistic. Even though the highlights look near white on the reference photo, the drawing would lose its vibrancy and realism if a white pencil was chosen. Always choose a light version of a colour where possible and only use the white for the very brightest highlights. Here I'm going back in to the eye and re-adding in those dark values. The Creta Colour Black Chalk Pencil is used for the darkest areas as it's the deepest black available. Moving on down to the lower jaw, I dabbed the area with a kneadable eraser to remove any excess pastel and then proceeded to use a mixture of black, cold greys and light greys to render the details. I will typically work from dark to light, so the darkest black lines will go first. These are typically for the dark gaps in between. Next, in the blue grey, this will give depth for the lighter highlights to go on top at the end. I like to use colder greys as it makes the white fear brighter as opposed to using warmer greys. Carrying on below the eye, I'm using yellows, light pinks and whites to bring out those highlights. This is a really satisfying part of the drawing process for me as I personally love to watch all of the details come to life. I'm paying close attention to the direction and the lengths of each of the hairs. Again, if you would like a full list of the pencils used for this drawing, it is included with the near 6 hour voiceover in-depth tutorial now available on my Patreon channel. Here I'm just taking browns and dark reds to enhance the colours to this part of the eye as I can see them on the reference photo before moving on. Following the same method as what I have just previously completed, I'm taking sharp pencils and adding in the highlight lines to the top of the head. Again, following the important direction of these hairs and paying close attention to how long or short they are. Underneath some of these highlight details, I will add other colours such as yellows to give more vibrancy to the area and to add more depth. Adding a yellow on top of the brown base layer will create more variation and give the illusion of other fur underneath the very highlighted hair. The overall appearance of the fox is orange, but if you colour pick the particular colour of details, you will find many shades of brown for the darker areas, then orange as things become lighter, leading up to yellows and pinks. These colours will correlate to how illuminated the fur is, so picking the right colours is very important for achieving realism. 
Once you have penciled in those highlighted details, adding in darker browns in between the hairs will achieve even more detail by giving the illusion of more depth. Adding in brown lines also allows you to determine how many gaps and how big they are between the hairs, which will again translate to how dense the fur is. More and bigger gaps means less dense fur. Next, I'm taking the Caran d'Ache light grey pencil and I'm mapping out all of the highlighted hairs going down joining the jaw area. I have sharpened my pencil to a point to allow me to deposit nice sharp lines. I'm leaving quite a lot of gaps here as the fur isn't that dense. Once I have mapped out the general direction of these hairs, I can go on top with a white pencil and with a slightly harder pressure to start bringing out the most highlighted areas. Next, I'm going to move on to the ear, first rendering the details on the background ear fur. Again, working with the same techniques and working from dark to light. It's important to be careful when drawing in the hairs that go into the bright right background. For this, I opt for a sharp light grey pencil and I use very little pressure to draw light lines going into the background. I can also see a slight hint of blue, so I add that in with a vibrant blue pencil. I will also use greys and lighter browns to bring out some of the darker subtle highlights that I can see. Shifting to the foreground ear, you will notice that it's quite a bright section of fur around the rim compared to most of the portrait. I'm using light yellows and whites to subtly bring out some of the details. The very tips of the ears are even brighter so I will replicate this by applying slightly more pressure with my white pencil. Before adding in more highlights to this area, I first want to add in more of a yellow hue to make sure that the vibrancy stays nice and high. Here there is a lot of bright white hairs going into the ear cavity which I will now start to draw in. This can be one of the more challenging details to draw as there is a huge contrast between the white highlighted hairs and the dark ear cavity. I'm using the Conte Paris White which is a very opaque white pencil as well as the Carbothella White to keep the hair marks strong and opaque. Below this there are also other hairs falling into this dark area and I'm first picking the excess base layer pigment up with a needable eraser before I put down any pencil marks. This will allow the lines to be even more opaque. For the lines I'm using a pale yellow and then I will take a black to reinforce the dark section. After ensuring the dark area was dark enough and that the section was well contrasted, I could carry on with the fine details around the ear. Here I'm using a sharp Caran d'Ache light grey and filling in these hairs as I can see them on the reference. To make the hairs look more natural, I will slightly alternate from a harder to a lighter pressure with my pencil to make some of the hairs stand out more. You want to avoid all of the hairs looking the same, so even changing the length and direction slightly each time will help with the overall realism. To keep the contrast high and to ensure a real sense of depth, I take a black pencil and fill in some of the gaps. Only a light pressure is needed for this. I'm not filling in every gap, just a few to give a sense of more depth. I'm then taking an opaque pencil such as the Caran d'Ache Chinese White and reinforcing the bright highlights around the edges. Once I'm happy with the ear, I then move on to the patch of fur below the ear. First taking a dark brown pencil to map out the dark gaps that I can see between the clumps of fur. This helps to organise the area and to set out the different sections. I noticed that on the reference photo, the fur here has quite a strong yellow tone so I'm sure to pencil that in by only using a light pressure and allowing the pastel to blend seamlessly. The great thing about pastels is how well they blend, so I use this to my advantage whenever possible. I will then take a white pencil and overlap some of the hairs here to better incorporate the two sections together, before moving on to using a pale yellow pencil to bring out some of these colourful highlights. 
Again, always choose more colourful pencils where it's possible to keep your vibrancy high. This will make your artwork more visually interesting. As I come down to the lower section, I again opt for a dark brown pencil. This is to start mapping out the dark gaps to increase the sense of depth. I want to get the darker tones in first, as when I come to add in the white highlights, I will overlap these hairs and make them more random so that they appear more realistic. It would be difficult to add in these dark gaps once those random highlight hairs are drawn in. I find it's usually better to work from dark to light. As I did with the previous white first section, I will move up to a cold grey and then to a white for the final hairs on top. This dark grey middle layer gives more dimension. The extra colour and tones in this area will make it less flat than if I just used a white pencil alone. It's given a sense of darker highlights that are just showing through. When I need some hairs to stand out, I will apply more pressure with my pencil which leaves bolder marks. When moving on to this section, I first opt for a brown pencil to organise the area into sections by drawing in the darker gaps. Then I can start to add in the highlights surrounding these gaps. I first start with the darker highlights. As these hairs are more in the shade, it's suitable to use a dark golden colour. Just using a light pressure will bring out these subtle details. Before I work my way to the brighter final highlighted hairs, I first want to fill out the darker gaps in between. Here I'm using the black Carbothello pencil and drawing in lines to the same direction that I can see the fur flowing in. This will add some much needed contrast to the area and make everything look a bit more dynamic. It's important to add in these black lines here to join these sections up. When I come to fill in the bright highlights, the black lines in between will seamlessly blend the sections together instead of it being an abrupt light to dark area. Once those dark lines are in, I can slightly overlap the bright highlights on top and the sections of fur will start to look more naturally integrated. For these white lines, I'm taking a sharp pencil with a slight pressure and creating longer lines coming out from the darker area. Slightly changing the direction, pressure and length with each stroke for a realistic effect. As I recently did with the black pencil, here I'm taking a dark brown and breaking up this area into sections. This will organise the area for when I come to draw in the highlights, but also to add that much needed contrast for the darker gaps in between. Again, I'm simply working from dark to light, but always keeping in mind to make sure that my darks are as dark as possible and my highlights are nice and bright, which will make the overall artwork very dynamic and visually interesting. I'll first start with the darker highlight hairs which consist of this lovely deep yellow colour and then work my way up to the lighter yellows. The deep red brown colour of the base layer is important to have showing here so I don't want to cover it completely. It's okay not to fill in every section with details where necessary. You'll notice that in this section in particular there are less highlights so I make sure to leave more gaps in between, simply replicating with my pencils what I see in the reference photo. I'm really happy with how the fur turned out. I love being able to pick out as much detail as possible so it's always hard to know when to stop. There are a few details left to complete before this piece can be finished though. First I focus on the nose. You'll notice the subtle hint of purples and blues showing so I'm sure to add in those highlights with my pastel pencil. 
I do this by lightly gliding the pencil on the paper with very little pressure and just letting a slight amount of colour to be transferred. I then reinforce the darker areas before moving on to cold and light greys to bring out those shiny details. Using opaque pencils such as the Caran Dash are a good choice as they will leave bright marks. The same for the eye here, not much is needed, just a few markings with the cold and light grey to bring out those shiny details. One of the most challenging aspects of a realistic animal portraiture is the whiskers. To do this I lay my drawing flat on a table or desk and sharpen my pencil to a thin point. I then hold my pencil far back and perform a flicking motion. It's important to flick at the end so that the whisker gets thinner and doesn't abruptly stop. And here is the final drawing. I really hope this video has been useful for you. Please let me know in the comments if it has or if you have any questions and I will be more than happy to help out. If you're looking for a much more in-depth lesson on this drawing, I have the full real-time tutorial now available on my Patreon. I know I find great use in watching other artists draw in real-time. You'll also find many other videos on my Patreon. I have created a whole section on my website listing all of the available lessons and how long each one is. I'll leave a link to that in the description to this video if you would like to preview all of the in-depth lessons. If you are new to soft pastels and pastel pencils, or would just like to pick up as many tips as possible, you are more than welcome to grab my free PDF guide. Thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you in the next one.